I'm going to start a series here called Time to Quit Assuming. It's based on an essay that I wrote a little while back and it's the way I've been feeling for a long time about education in particular. The most dangerous thing that the educator can do is assume. The education system is comprised of educated people and for years they have assumed to know what students need to accomplish and achieve success. The path to success in education was charted to be the same as the one the educated had have taken. A system not only designed by the keepers of the system, but studied extensively and evaluated by the same. For hundreds of years, the model used to produce, produce a percentage of students that ventured lockstep through the system until they graduated from the post-secondary schools. These students were deemed successful. The unsuccessful students who fell out of step were trained by a system by the system, excuse me, to take their place on the factory floor. This is the second entry for the time to quit assuming. The information came and, and a society that valued education changed, yet the educational system failed to keep up with the changes. It almost became a cliche for many writers, politicians, and the mainstream media to portray education as an institution who does not recognize a changing world, students, and technology. Fulton states that classrooms of today resemble their ancestors of 50 to 100 years ago, much more closely than do today's hospital operating rooms, business offices, manufacturing plants, or scientific labs. To Further clarify this, Moldbash states, if you put a doctor of 100 years ago in today's operating room, she would be lost. Yet, if you place a teacher from 100 years ago into one of today's classrooms, she wouldn't skip a beat. The educational system's lack of change has, has resulted in a dropout rate of 9.4 in 2000. In America, 60% of minorities do not complete grade 12. Only 28% of grade 12 high school students believe that coursework is meaningful. A mere 21% believe their courses are interesting, and only 39% believe that schoolwork will have any bearing on their success in later life. During the last three decades, there has been many attempts and initiatives designed to change this situation, and all but a few have experienced a low adoption rate. While governments, universities, schools, teachers, and parents struggle to find the methods, the pedagogy, and the training which will allow them to address these poor statistics, they use authentic assessment, achieving excellence in education, leave no child behind, educating the whole child, and making sure that they provide an education that makes a difference. Shirley and Hard Hargreaves confirms every few years in America, education, excuse me, every few years in American education, a new slogan is coined as the next big thing. Total quality management, sharing decision making, and outcome based education all once marched across the educational landscape, grabbing headlines, filling copies. Yet they left little improvement in pupils' learning in their. This is the third entry in the assuming. All the next big thing programs are expensive initiatives driven by governments and education administration. Some have pr produced short-term target results, but do not recognize that throwing money at it will just result in a more expensive system. It will still not meet the needs of the students. Jukes clarifies, despite the fact that there are more than 40 years of solid research on how learners learn best, of how the brain functions, and of what instructional modes are, models excuse me, are most effective, this research has not been widely accepted or integrated into most classrooms to better help today's learners and their learning and communication preferences, nor is it reflected in many of the assumptions that are the foundation of public education today. The burning problem is the fact that although governments recognize the need for change, they have not recognized the education, that educational systems should and must reflect the societal changes that have occurred over the last decade. Levine proposes that the challenge facing education schools is not to do a better job at what they are already doing, but to do a fundamentally different job. Time to quit assuming, entry number four. Education reform is a necessity and can only be achieved by wholesale change in the approach to educating a student who is substantially different than the students for whom the traditional education system was designed. These students are consumers of education and the information age allows them the opportunity to create, consume, remix, and share material with each other. 
They also bring new expectations to the education system. Of all the system changes that have been tried over the last 100 years, the only one that has experienced huge uptake is online education, which is a form of distance education. Though distance education has been around for 100 years, but with the advent of personal computers and the dawn of the information age, has moved distance education in the mainstream and this alternative mode of education is beginning to influence the status quo. Heller explains that the matrimony of education and computers is truly a marriage made in heaven because the computer has become the ultimate bridge of communication bringing tutors and students together no matter the time, no matter the place, no matter the distance. Watson states that 38 states that 38 states have now established state-led online learning programs, policy, regulating online learning, or both. Enrollment on online courses has surged in the past year, increasing by as much as 50% in some states. Time to quit assuming. Entry number five. The rapid growth of e-learning has left researchers scrambling to try, the, try to fill the void of empirical research on K-12 e-learning. Much of the current research was aimed at administrators, parents, teacher, and teachers. These educational stakeholders have assumed to know the wants, the needs of the students, their clients. This assumption has not served them well because students are beginning to act like consumers and are taking their educational funds elsewhere. E-learning removes the barrier of time and distance, making it more accessible, which has allowed interested students the ability to search for a system that better fits their need. The brick and mortar school in the past have had complete autonomy over the student and very similar to the only game in town concept. Now with e-learning, students can opt for the alternative and this new game has threatened the traditional autonomy. Students by choosing are making a statement which the educational community can embrace as an opportunity to study their clients. This is the final entry in the time to quit assuming. The development and growth of e-learning in the post-secondary educational system has been attributed to the educational's attempt to reach a new market using what was viewed as a cheaper method of education as well as the educator's assumption on how education should be delivered. E-learning in the K-12 system started simply as a different way of handling the traditional approach to education in an alternative fashion for a finite group of clients which were already in the system. It was embraced and students are seeking out e-learning in record numbers which continues to increase. This growth is attributed to the benefits of online learning as described by in the literature in five areas including expanding educational access, providing high quality learning opportunities, improving student outcome and skills, allowing for educational choice and achieving administrative efficiency. The fact that these benefits are realized through virtual school remains in doubt in the minds of some critics and the, re and the research to support these conjectures is limited. These five benefits are not dissimilar to the ones that were used as motivation to create many of the government's next big thing, yet those did not have the same uptake as e-learning has displayed. The one stakeholder of the educational system that has not been asked is the students. Is it possible that e-learning is providing that something to some students that they could not find in the traditional brick and mortar school? Some of the once captive audience of the only game in town have opted for a new game. Why? It's important that we start to research that.